Oh, hi, I'm sorry. Did I surprise you? I was surprised by your presence, but that's fine. Welcome to the monitor. Again, hopefully, a repeat viewer. As always, I'm Peter Rubin, senior editor at Wired. This week, what do we have? We have a couple of great instrumental albums that have dropped. We have a couple of, well, one comic book and one kind of incredible comic-ish graphic project that dropped. But first, we have the return of Homeland on Showtime. If you watch the Emmys, I'm sure you know that season one racked up the gold. And by gold, I mean the gold leaf covered, gilted, but probably underneath brass trophies, uh, notably for Damian Lewis and Claire Danes' lead portrayals. Damian Lewis, uh, if you did not watch season one last year as a U.S. Marine who is a POW and is now back and has converted to Islam and has become somewhat of a sleeper agent uh, for a, mm, let's just call him a terrorist, uh, a guy in uh, the Middle East who kind of is puppeteering the strings. Um, or controlling the strings as a puppeteer. At any rate, he is controlling kind of Damien Lewis's agenda. Claire Danes as a mentally unstable and vastly entertaining CIA agent who was kind of kicked out of the agency at the end of uh, season one. Sorry, retroactive spoiler alert. But they are both back and in fine form. They both have this just amazing, these great moments of kind of jaw-dropping uh, intensity, especially Damien Lewis who is able to channel all the blood flow into his face and specifically into his eyeballs so that you think they're just going to pop right out of his skull. Um, and Claire Danes has a moment in episode one which first aired on Sunday night which is just so off the rocker as far as uh, insanity goes that I, that I don't even want to spoil it for you but you will know when you see it it is near the end of the episode. At any rate because it started on Sunday night and Showtime is one of those premium cable networks. They are playing it all week long. S episode two starts Sunday night, uh, but got plenty of time to catch up, so make sure you check that out. Back to you. Okay, thank you. Why, you ask, am I standing in front of an enormous lotus flower? Am I achieving nirvana? Perhaps, but more because Flying Lotus's new album is out this week. Until the Quiet Comes, it is his fourth album. He brings back Erica Badu and Thundercat and some other people that he's worked with in the past. Really, really nice record. I mean, there are some moments of kind of, uh, not atonality, but they're certainly percussively uh, jarring, if you will, some kind of stuttery things. But there are also some like really smoothed out, uh, nice moments, things that wouldn't have been out of place, say, 20 years ago, um, but have been updated. I, I, you know, it's it's for it's for a nice kind of instrumental end-to-end -end experience. But it is not the only one like that. Uh, I want to also give a shout to uh, Hurricane Season in Brooklyn, which is an album that actually came out last week from Analog Player Society. Um, and I want to kind of give that a little equal billing alongside the Flying Lotus album. Analog Player Society is a group of session musicians uh, in Brooklyn that have all been kind of brought together uh, to create this record. And it is it's kind of a surprise. It was kind of a sleeper experience for me. Um, some people like to compare them to, to Vampire Weekend in the sense that they kind of bring, quote, world music into, into pop music. I don't exactly know what that means. I do know that a lot of the, the cuts on the album have kind of a reggae lilt to them. They definitely play with that, the, with a little bit of one drop and a little bit of shuffle beats. Um, but there's a kind of really entertaining cover of uh, I Can't Wait, the old freestyle 80s song by New Shoes. Um, with with some great female vocals on it, um, she kind of scats her ass off on it. Um, but it's it's a really upbeat album, which kind of is a nice counterpart to the Flying Lotus, which is a lot more down tempo and low key. So Flying Lotus until the quiet comes, and Analog Player Society Hurricane Season in Brooklyn, two new albums, one brand new this week, the other new from last week, both worth a listen. Make sure you pick those up. Back to you. Okay, thanks for that. Let's, let's talk about comics. Um, first off. Happy, number one, uh, which started last week. It is Grant Morrison's new four-issue miniseries. It's always nice when the uh, craziest person in comics writing comes back, and it is the tale, very quickly, of kind of your, your typical alcoholic, uh, ex-detective, has all kinds of issues, including mental, turned hitman, and uh, he has stumbled onto this kind of mob fortune and now he is on the run from the mob and he is also hallucinating or so he thinks this crazy cartoon blue horse who purports to be uh, someone else's imaginary friend and is trying to lead him to safety. It is ridiculous and it has one of the most uh, 
hilariously disturbing panels that I've seen all year. Uh, I can't really describe it because this is a family show, but trust me when I say when you see it, you will know what I am talking about. It involves dressing up like some sort of an insect and engaging in some sort of act of love. Let's leave it at that. Um, so that is one of the comic things to check out for. And the other is this. What is this? This is Building Stories, which is Chris Ware's new project. It, it's out this week. If you read uh, some of Building Stories, it appeared almost a decade ago in uh, New York Times Sunday Magazine. He had this kind of serial uh, Comic strip, I guess, is the only way to describe it. That sounds really um, patronizing, but I don't mean it to be. Uh, that involve that kind of follow the denizens of this building. But what's incredible about this? It is actually a collection. It is an endless collection. You know, you got bits here. You got a strip. You've got a book here. You've got. You've got like a dungeon master screen which involves the building itself. It's, it's all these different forms of storytelling, and there's really no beginning and there's no end. It's just kind of meant for you to pick up things and read them and, and experience them in any kind of order you choose. Um, as such, it has this kind of atemporality that is at the same time um, weirdly lifelike. Uh, it, it's, it's a voyeuristic kind of experience, but it's, it's all the best for it. Chris Ware kind of nails quiet, despair and sadness in a way that kind of resonates with me. I, I find myself on the verge of tears pretty often reading his stuff. Um, and uh, so far in this, that, is, that has definitely happened. So uh, this, is a, this is definitely not your average $4 weekly comic purchase. Um, but Building Stories by Chris Ware, it is out this week and it is well worth the pickup uh, if you feel like making the investment. But that's it for The Monitor this week. Uh, please email us at themonitor at wired.com. Any suggestions, love, criticism, et cetera, et cetera. We will be back next week with more pop culture goodness. But until then, inspirational catchphrase here.